want you to hit me as hard as you can. When it comes to horror movies, Leatherface might be head or face and shoulders above the rest. What makes him stand apart from the likes of Freddy, Jason, Chucky, and others is the fact that he's just a human being. Nothing supernatural here, unless you count the startling amount of times he's been rebooted or how tangled the timeline of his mayhem has become. But now that the big boy has released yet another sequel into the world, it's time to look back at the two main entries in the franchise and apologies to those who hold the bonkers 1986 sequel near and dear to their hearts. I'm talking about the one that started it all, Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Michael Bay produced remake released in 2003. So let's split Leatherface into two and see how he likes it. Face off. Warning, no actual science was used to determine the outcome of Face Off. Your results may vary. Please do not consume Face Off if you are allergic to conjecture, opinion, or general nonsense. Now before we continue, we'd like to thank you for watching Face Off. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes live. Now back to the show. Round 1, Setup and Story. With a title like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the movie doesn't require a very complex story, and thankfully neither version does. In the original, five friends are simply driving to a cemetery amidst news of graves being disturbed. They just want to make sure their grandfather's plot has not been messed with. After that, they decide to check out their old family home. No big deal, save for the fact that they run afoul of a disturbed hitchhiker who momentarily ruins the trip with some truly mad antics. Once disposed of him, they soon come across an even worse Texan, the murderous brute called Leatherface. A butcher whose days of killing cows are behind him, graduating to two-legged game instead. In the remake, this setup is just as simple, maybe even more so. Here we get five friends who are on their way to a Leonard Skinner concert in Texas after buying a batch of weed in Mexico. Smoke weed every day. Along the way, they too pick up a hitchhiker, although this one isn't quite as scary as the dude in the first movie, but her presence is just as alarming. The very distraught young woman, clearly worried about something out there in the hazy Texas sunlight, isn't with them long before she blows her own brains out. Ouch. The gang understandably freaked out, but calling the sheriff turns out to be a bad idea as he turns out to be a sadistic nutcase. And soon enough, the friends are deep in the heart of a Texas chainsaw nightmare with Leatherface and his nasty family front and center. Neither film is exactly strong on story, but they don't have to be. Simple setups leading to simple executions. Literally, we can call this one a draw. Round two, style slash atmosphere. Let's hand it to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Both versions, you'll have to search far and wide to find movies that make you crave a hot shower more than these two. The original is a masterpiece of horror theater. Toby Hooper, with such a low budget and working in the grimmest of conditions, is a brilliant conductor of every single aspect of this film, from the lo-fi camera work to the unnerving production design and the outrageous, borderline, insane performances. If ever a movie seemed like madness was literally sweating out of its pores, this is the one. It's correctly billed as one of the most terrifying movies ever created for a reason. It feels as though it's documenting the exploits of Mad Men. The remake, which was the first movie from the then freshman production company Platinum Dunes, is indeed a grimy and nasty bit of work, even if it's obviously a more polished picture than the original. Director Marcus Nisbull is more than capable of framing an uncomfortable close-up of a sweaty face or of an icky splash of gore, and overall the movie has a stylish, dark, and dank atmosphere that effectively serves up some unpleasantness at least for a Hollywood production. But the brilliant work by Hooper and his crew cannot be overstated. It's one of the best horror movies ever. And if you ask us, one of the best directed movies ever made, period. Hard to contend with that. Verdict, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974.
Round three, Leatherface. At first glance, it might seem like the character of Leatherface is a pretty one-note character. He's a hulking ex-butcher with a disfigured face whose hobbies include sewing, dressing up for dinner, and murdering out-of-towners and turning them into stew. Surely a man of many talents, but both Texas Chainsaw Massacres actually approach the character quite differently. In Toby Hooper's version, Leatherface is a terrifying creation, yes, but he's also a childlike wimp in the face of his overpowering siblings. He's prone to moments of whining and self-doubt. Not exactly a complicated character, but rather fascinating when you regard his bouts of violence against his moments of being a scared little child himself. Dare we say sometimes you even feel almost a little bad for poor old Leatherface? And that mask? Has anyone seen anything like it before? Can it be replicated in terms of pure ghastliness? Not likely. Conversely, the Leatherface in the remake is pretty much a standard movie monster, an almost unstoppable brute who has little to nothing in the personality department. While he's effectively scary at several points of the movie, he's never more than just a freakish boogeyman who pops up out of the shadows every once in a while. His mask is pretty gnarly too, just an angry expression of unapologetic horror, save for when he's got Eric Balfour's face resting on top of it. You gotta be fucking kidding. There's no doubt Leatherface is always going to be an imposing screen presence, which might explain why he's still chopping people up almost 50 years since he stomped onto the screen, but we can all probably agree the original depiction of the character with his weird insecurities and unpredictability is nothing less than legendary. Verdict, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. Round four, Leatherface's family. Another way in which the films greatly differ is the presentation of Leatherface's family. Toby Hooper made Leatherface's home life pretty simple. He has two relatives, neither of them big in the sanity department. One is the aforementioned hitchhiker, a babbling, violent psycho who might even be scarier than Leatherface himself. The other is the proprietor of a local gas station and barbecue joint, an initially decent guy who is later revealed to be a maniacal member of this very bizarro family. He's most likely the eldest brother, though the movie never specifies for sure. To think this guy is the rational one may give you an idea that this brood isn't one worth visiting during the holidays. The iconic dinner table sequence where the trio torments Sally simply with schoolyard taunts is the stuff of nightmares. The ghoulish characters are all the more effective when you respect how solid the performances are, you really feel like you're in the presence of genuine psychopaths. Good luck finding a more loathsome family than this one. The remake doesn't bring us updated versions of Leatherface's horrible brothers. Instead, it shows us a more extended family of more or less harmless figures. That is until you consider the local sheriff, a madman named Hoyt, played by that infamous drill sergeant, Arlie Ermey, who is related to Leatherface in some indeterminable way. Make no mistake, Ermi presents us with a truly despicable villain, so much so that he almost overshadows Leatherface himself, and it would appear as though Ermi is having an absolute blast playing the creep. God damn it, I got just as much respect for a dead body as anybody around here. Get that nasty goddamn thing out of the backseat of my goddamn car. Everyone's a winner, baby. Hoyt is indeed hideous, but the rest of the Leatherface clan is a pretty disposable bunch of dirty hillbillies. Once again, it's hard to surpass the original when it brings the goods in such a memorable, skin-crawling fashion. Verdict? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. Round five, final girl. While not necessarily the very first final girl in the way that we know it, Sally Hardesty broke down some barriers with her resistance in the face of evil and certain death. Played by Marilyn Burns, Sally is interesting in that she is utterly forgettable until we realize she's going to be the film's main character. In the first 30 minutes or so, we don't even register her name, only until the cow shit really hits the fan do we have to give props to Sally for her perseverance, especially towards the very end when she has a front row seat to absolute madness. 
Please give kudos to Marilyn Burns for surviving this movie with her sanity because that dinner sequence probably would have broken any one of us. In the remake, we get a somewhat stronger heroine in the pleasing form of Jessica Biel's Erin, a fun-loving gal who, not unlike her predecessor, isn't given much of a personality until she's forced to run away from a chainsaw-wielding maniac. Unlike Sally before her, however, Erin is able to keep herself somewhat composed in stark contrast to Sally's almost non-stop hysterics. <laughs> Give Erin this, she's rather gutsy and Beale early on in her feature film career does more than just look pretty in a demanding role. Our girl even strikes a rather fatal blow to Leatherface and takes out the vile sheriff in the film's last moments. With all due respect to Sally and everything she went through, Erin deserves to win this round just for relieving Leatherface of an arm. Verdict, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 2003. Round six, final girls friends. This might be the toughest category yet because let's face it, neither Sally nor Aaron is blessed with sympathetic pals. In the 1974 version, Sally's group is mostly forgettable. Only hardcore fans know all their names. With the most distinct character of the bunch being Franklin, Sally's paraplegic brother. Now Franklin is memorable for one thing, he's unbearably annoying. <laughs> Any sympathy for his plight we might feel is washed away early on thanks to his obnoxiousness. And while his untimely death is certainly a shocker, it's not necessarily a bummer. Franklin and the rest are the very definition of lambs to the slaughter. In the remake, we're given a supporting cast with a little more personality, although not much more. We have Aaron's goofy boyfriend, a dorky pal, who certainly tests our patience early on. He's a bit of a Franklin, if you ask us, and two horn dogs who look pretty, but have nothing of interest to say. When judging this category, it's more about which group you'd rather spend hours with in a stinky van, and while neither group is the correct answer, we'll have to go with the latter's slightly more enjoyable gang. Verdict? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003. Round seven. Horror! You can't make a movie called Texas Chainsaw Massacre without breaking a few blood vessels, and so it goes that both movies are appropriately bloody. But famously, the original film really isn't really all that gory. The blood is splattered about, sure, but how much gore do you actually see? The movie isn't nearly as in your face as you might initially suspect. It's a credit to the terrific direction by Hooper that you think you see more than you actually do. Make no mistake, it's an unpleasant experience, but in terms of actual shredded flesh, it's pretty tame. And the horror factor, which is way more important in this genre, is nearly insurmountable. The psychological brutality found in that godforsaken house is enough for 10 horror movies, and no person who's seen the original will soon forget what goes on in there. This is one of the all-time greats of the genre, folks, and its power has not wavered a bit, even after all these years. The remake shows up when it has to, we give it that, it's gorier, yes, more generous with the colored food dye and prosthetics, but it's never truly scary in the way a great horror movie needs to be. It doesn't torment your psyche or haunt your dreams the way the OG does, and perhaps that's because it is what it looks like, a slicker movie with a bigger budget meant to play to eager opening weekend audiences. It's admirably gruesome in parts for sure, but it just doesn't match the get me the hell out of here levels of fright the original does. Verdict, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. Final verdict. While the remake is one of the more well-conceived horror remakes of the modern age, and it gets the job done in its own way, let's face it, it's tough to come at the king. Hail to the king, baby. And the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the greatest films in the genre, just a fantastic movie overall, no matter what genre you're considering. And so it's clear who the winner is here. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Leatherface, slap on your war paint, get your best face on, and come up to accept your award, you big lug. We can't tell how old you are at this point, but thanks to your fine work in cinema and in the catering industry, you're ageless as far as we're concerned. 
But don't let us have the final word. Tell us your opinion in the comments section and let us know your choice. Thanks for watching. I smell a war burning across an ocean. And in my backyard I feel hell rising, heaven falling, earth shaking, moving my soul. I seen us a swirling down the toilet. Pollute the mother, poison us all. Yeah, I got this notion in my stomach.